All right, first grade, welcome back to your math lesson. For today for math, you will need your guided class practice. You will also need your crayons. Please make sure you're using crayons or colored pencil. I just prefer the crayons. Um, marker will bleed through, so please do not use marker as it will bleed through your paper and then you won't be able to see what you need on the back. But we do need our crayons a lot for our guided class practice today. Uh, you also could have out your math folder if you'd like that. And we are going to get started, obviously, in a pencil. And we are going to get started with our lesson today. Today our lesson is all about some, some more, and some, some went away stories. And so what we're going to do is we are going to actually draw them so that we can see it today. So let's get right to work. Today we are going to listen to a story, and it's about Darlene. And Darlene went fishing with her sister. She caught two fish in the morning, and in the afternoon she caught three more fish. So what happened in the story? Well, Darlene caught fish in the morning and more fish in the afternoon. So we say that that would be a some, some more. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to actually draw pictures and write number sentences for these some, some more stories and for some, some went away stories. So I'm actually going to use the green to start. So on our board, you could have your, if you have a piece of paper, you get a piece of paper out too, okay? So how many fish at the, uh, did she catch in the morning? She caught two fish in the morning, okay? And then what happened? In the afternoon, she caught three more fish. So I'm going to put a line in between my rectangle to show that we had some and then we got some more. And we just said she caught three more fish in the afternoon. Okay, now we can see how many total fish she caught, can't we? We want to now write what our number sentence would look like. And you'll know that I've already talked to you about having labels. Labels tells us exactly what our story is about so that people don't get confused. So how many fish should we start with? Two. Two fish plus how many in the afternoon? Three fish equals how many total fish? Five fish. Okay, so I started with two. Notice I put the fish. My plus sign tells me that I'm adding more to it. Three fish. Then I need to have an equal sign. And then this is my total here. Five. And it's not just five, it's five fish. So anytime we answer a story problem, we're writing our answer with a label. This whole thing is the answer. It's our number sentence. It's our label. Um, so we knew that this was a some, some more problem. Let's take a look at another one very similar to it. I'll make my box here. All right, here's our next problem. Go ahead and take a listen. Um, there were two birds in the birdhouse. Their eggs hatched and they had four baby birds. Okay, so what happened in this story? Well, there were two birds in the birdhouse and then eggs hatched. Now there's four more in the birdhouse. So we know that that's a some, some more story. So we want to draw this. We want to draw a picture to show what happened. What are we going to draw first? We are going to draw two birds because that's how many there were to start. Then what happened? we have to draw four more birds because four more hatched. Okay, now that shows us our picture. Now we want to write a number sentence to prove it. So how many did we start with? We started with two. We want to know how many total birds are in the nest now. So two birds. Then we put a plus sign. How many more? Four birds equals a total of how many birds altogether? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six what? Six birds. I need to have my label, okay? This is a some, some more story. Remember, when we answer the story problem, we're going to answer it with a label. That word, the noun, that's our label. 
I want to show you a different kind of problem now. Take a listen to this one. There were six ice cream bars in the package. Felicia and her friend each ate one ice cream bar. All right, so what happened in this story? Well, we had to start with some ice cream bars. How many were in the package? Six. So I'm going to draw six rectangles. If you have paper, you could draw six rectangles too. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there were six, and then what happened in this story? Well, some, some went away is what happened in this story, right? Because Felicia and her friend each ate one bar. So how many total bars were gone? One, two, Felicia and her friend. So I need to X out two ice cream bars. And now I need to know what is left. Well, we have one, two, three, four ice cream bars left. So I'm gonna start by saying how many total there were. Because in a sum sum one away, you start with your biggest number and then you get rid of some and you end up with a smaller number. So we started with six bars and what happened? Felicia and her friend each ate one. So we got rid of some. We need to put a minus sign or a subtraction sign. Six bars minus two bars equal sign how many bars are left whatever is not x out that's what's left one two three four four bars were left when we answer a story problem it doesn't matter if it is some some more or some some went away we need to have a label all right i'm gonna have one more problem for you Let's go ahead and take a look at one more story problem. All right. Cecil had eight dimes in his pocket. He spent three dimes for a pencil. All right, what happened in this story? Cecil started with dimes and he spent three of them for a pencil. So we want to know what's left. So what kind of a story problem is this? This is going to be a sum. Sum went away. Right. So first we should draw a picture to show what happened. And what do we need to start with? We need to start with how many total dimes he had when he started this problem, which was eight. So I'm going to draw uh, eight dimes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to put a D in them. It's going to give it a label all on its own, isn't it? It's going to tell us exactly what kind of coin we're talking about. And then what happened next? He spent three dimes. How am I going to show that? Well, I'm going to show that by crossing out the dimes. And we're going to go on the right. How many do we have to cross out? three of them. We start at the right and we work our way to the left when we're crossing them out. Okay, so what number sentence will we write to show how many dimes he has in his pocket now? How many do you start with? Eight. Eight what? Eight dimes. Then we got rid of some, so we need to use a minus sign. Minus three dimes equals how many total dimes left? One, two, three, four, five. All right. Now, this is something that we are going to continue to work on every single day. So please make sure that you are continuing to practice this. Um, if it is a sum some more, you'll put that line in between. Okay. If I said that three girls were at the store and three more girls came into the store and I wanted to know what kind of a problem I would, that would be. I would say that it's a sum some more and I show that it's sum some more by putting a line in between the first number and the second number. And then I would say three girls plus three girls equals, how many total girls? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
using my label always. But if it sums someone away, you guys, if it sums someone away, you're putting your total amount in your box to show for your picture, then you're crossing out what went away. You cross it out right from there, and then you find your answer. All right, it is time to practice. So what I need you to do, please, is grab out for me your guided class practice. And we have a chance to show this this morning and practice what we just learned. So please make sure that you get your name and your date on your paper. Name and date. Okay, so I'll put my name on my paper. And today is October 6th, 2020. October 6, 2020. You will need crayons for this today. So please make sure that you have your crayons out. You will need them in just a minute. Number one, there were four plants in room two. The children brought in three more plants. How many plants are in room two now? Draw a picture and write a number sentence for the story and write the answer with a label. Okay, you need to draw and write a number sentence. So let's get started with that. There were four plants in room two. The children brought in three more plants. Is that some, some more or some, some went away? Well, it's some, some more. Now, I'm not a very good artist, but I'm just gonna draw little pots it doesn't say what kind of a plant, so I'm just going to make it look like this. Okay, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. There's my plants. We need to start with four. And then what happened? The children brought in three more. So go ahead and put that line through it to help show that. And then go ahead and make three more plants. Your plants might not look identical to mine and that is okay. Mm -mm. Okay, now that they're done, we need to make our number sentence. You can see I underlined the important parts. You could also box them so that you know exactly what information you need. How many plants did we start with? Four. So I'm going to write four plants plus three plants equals seven plants. That's how many total we had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four plants plus three plants equals seven plants. You need to write that whole thing on the line. And then what's my answer? It's how many total? And I said that was seven plants. So I need to write seven plants on that line. I cannot just write seven. Okay. If you need more time with that, then you go right ahead and pause the video until you have that done and then go ahead and push play. For number two, we need three different colors. We need red, blue, and green. So go ahead into your crayon box and get out red, blue, and green. Red, blue, and green. Remember, you are using crayon or colored pencil. I just prefer the crayon. Um, but you are not using marker on this, please. It is really important. It bleeds through and it makes it really hard to see what's on the back side then. And we want to make sure that we can see what's on the back side. So we're gonna start with the red. Our first instruction says, color one half red. Did you hear the one? There's two total pieces, that's why we know it's in half. And it says color one half red. Your one half doesn't have to be the same as my one half. It could be the other side but you're only coloring in one of the pieces. You're not coloring in both pieces. 
The next one says color one third blue. One third. So I have to color in one of the three pieces. Does it matter which cut which one I do? Which one I color in? No, it doesn't. One third. Color one third blue. And then it says color one sixth green. So one out of my six pieces, I'm going to color green. Does it matter which one? No. Your one piece doesn't have to be the same as mine, but you need to make sure only one of the pieces are shaded. Okay. Number three, keep those crayons handy. You will need them again. Number three, write these numbers. 59. How will I write 59? Five, nine, fifty-nine. How about ninety-five? Nine, five, ninety-five. Okay, now, don't let this confuse you. We have to continue the pattern, then we have to color it. So I'm going to use a different color here with my stuff so it looks a little bit nicer for you. So we need to color this repeating pattern. Continue it first. Red, blue, blue, green. Red, blue, blue, green. Red, blue, blue, green. Red, blue, blue, green. Okay? Now that we finished that, we need to color it. The R is red the B is blue and the G is green. You have to make sure you do both steps. So go ahead and make sure that you color in these squares. Do it right now. Do your best to color it in nice and neat. I know sometimes we go on the lines a little bit even like I just did, but try your hardest to stay in those lines. Good save, huh? Finish up coloring in all these squares. Last set, hopefully, by now. All right. If you're still working on getting those colored, you can go ahead and pause the video to finish coloring them. We're going to keep moving on with number five. We need to find the answers. So here we go. Six plus nine. Remember, take the six and go one less than that, which is five, and put the one in front of it. Six plus nine is 15. Seven plus nine, start at seven, go down one, add the one in front of it. Your answer, seven plus nine is 16. And then four plus two. Four plus two is six. Okay, now we have one more job with our crayons this morning. And so for this, you need to get out four different colors. Hopefully you still have out your red. You'll need your red. You will need green. You will need yellow. And you will need orange. If it helps you to color them in like I did, you're welcome to do that. If you don't need to, that's okay too. But those are the four colors that you will need. Orange, yellow, green, and red. Now I have my orange all set to go. Hopefully you're ready to go with those colors also. It says color all the squares orange. So I have to make sure that it's a square. Remember a square has four equal sides. 
does not have any sides that are longer than the other. That's a square. This little guy's a square. And even this one here. The only thing different about this one is that it's turned on its side. Okay. All three of those are squares. We need to color all the circles yellow. Do you see the circles? Color those in yellow. Color the triangles green. Remember triangles have how many sides? They have three sides. Do the triangles have to have equal sides? No, they don't all have to be the same length. They don't even have to all look the same. Each one of these three is triangles. And then it says color the rectangles red. So go ahead and take your red crayon or colored pencil and make sure that you color in the rectangles red. Remember that not all are going to have the exact same shape or size. So just remember that. Took a look at that a little bit yesterday morning in class. Okay, all three of those are rectangles. Notice this one looks a little more fat than, the, than these are. That's okay. It's not as long. This one's a little bit longer than this. Is that okay? Yes, it is. All right, when you're done with this front of the sheet, the back side will be your homework. Now, you will need colors again on the back side. Please make sure you use crayon or colored pencil. You need red. You need blue. You'll need green. Then down here, you'll need red, blue, and green. You'll need to continue the pattern first and then color it. And then you'll need those same colors that we just used. You'll need um, squares, orange, circles, yellow, triangles, green. Remember, triangles have three sides and the rectangles will be red. So you'll need to make sure that you have those five colors for the back side. When you are done, after you've made sure your name and the date is on it, and this whole side is finished, please make sure that it goes inside of your folder so that it's ready to go for the end of the week.